Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. This is part two of our course on how to make a roll printed hollow bead. In part one, I showed you how to make a silver frame to hold your roll printed images. And I mentioned the option of using mold making and lost wax casting techniques to put your frame into production. I also demonstrated how to roll print your images and dome them to fit inside your double-sided bead frame. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to apply gold to the top surface of your printed domes using a Korean technique called kembu. And I'll show you how to mount your printed discs into the framework. The Online Jewelry Academy has a video on kembu included in our playlist on our website. Now, some of you might wanna check that video out too. And an update to that video is that since we made that video, I purchased a new hot plate. And this one's great because it doesn't have exposed coils. It's pretty much just a flat surface to work on. To perform kombu, you'll need the following tools. A hot plate, a paintbrush, polished agate or titanium burnishers, tweezers, manicure scissors, gold foil, not gold leaf, and gum tragacanth that's dissolved into distilled water. I've gotten a number of questions from viewers concerning the gold foil and the gum tragacanth. I was taught how to do kimbu by Komilio Kim, who is a Korean expert. I've always had success working with gold foil and gum tragacanth. I've never tried it any other way, but you're free to experiment with other materials. I just don't know what the outcome is gonna look like. Additionally, you might wanna include a pair of heat resistant gloves into your list of tools and some liver of sulfur. That's for bumping up the contrast on your pieces. I'll also be using my Durston magnification lamps so that I can really see and access all of the fine details in this precise process. Before you begin, you'll need to raise the fine silver on the surface of the piece that you'll be applying the gold to. You do this through depletion plating. Lightly heat your silver until the shiny surface turns matte, quench it, and put it in the pickle pot. Neutralize the metal and brass brush, rinse, and dry. You'll need to repeat these steps at least seven times. You'll know when you've accomplished frosting the surface of your piece when the application of heat turns the surface of the piece a solid matte white. While you're raising the fine silver on your metal, you can prepare your gum tragacanth and gold foil. I like to dissolve about an eighth of a teaspoon of gum tragacanth into about a third of a cup of distilled water at least 24 hours before I plan on doing kombu. If I know I'm going to be working on a project like this, I generally mix this solution about a week ahead of time. Make a bit more than you think that you'll need. You can store it on the shelf it might grow a little bit of mold like mine did, but it'll work just fine. To prepare the gold foil, you'll need some tracing paper and a pair of very sharp manicure scissors. Make a fold in your tracing paper and insert the gold foil. Make sure that it's big enough to let you hold the gold foil without covering it with your fingers. Cut a small piece of gold foil and return the rest to your storage wrapper. Pick up your manicure scissors and begin to make parallel cuts. Cut the paper as if you're making a fringe. Then cut across the fringe at a 90 degree angle to create small squares of gold foil. You can use a saucer to catch the cutoffs. By the way, don't do that near a fan. For this next step, I'm gonna use my balanced arm LED dimmable magnification lamp from Durston Tools. And look, Durston was kind enough to send me the weighted base. In my home studio, I don't have a place to clamp the lamp to, so this base makes it functional for my home situation. Plus, I can easily move it where I need it. The diffuse, dimmable light and magnification will help me to better see the tiny pieces that I'll be working with. If you're interested in this magnification lamp, you can help support the Online Jewelry Academy by clicking the link in the description below. Next, place your clean metal disc on a work surface. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to apply the gold 
prior to the burnishing process. Now, if you need a little bit more detail on how this is done, you might want to check out our video on our website entitled How to Apply Gold to Silver Jewelry with Kumbu. And in that, I spend a little bit more time than I'm going to spend here. I'm just going to do a small portion of the piece. Now, the first thing you want to do is to just put a little bit of the gum tragacanth on your work surface. Now, if there's a little mold or any debris in there, don't worry about it. It should be fairly clean. And then you just want to moisten the area that you want to apply the gold to. Then just pick up a piece of gold the same way that you would pick up a piece of solder as if you're going to move solder with your flux brush. Okay, so all you really need to do at this point is just drop it onto the surface of the, of the piece. And then what you're going to do is just pick it up, put it on top of your hot plate, and turn the heat up to medium high. Now, it'll take a moment for everything to heat up, but slowly heating the gum tragacanth in this way will help to secure the gold to your piece. It's like a glue. When you see the gum tragacanth begin to darken, Pick up a burnisher in each hand. You'll use one to hold down your work and keep it steady, while you use the other to burnish the gold onto the surface of the design. The magnifying lamp really helps me to see that I've been burnishing every little spot. When you're done, pick up your piece with the tweezers and quench it in clear water. Repeat these steps until you've successfully applied gold foil to all of the areas that you wish to cover. When you're done applying gold, you might want to oxidize the remaining silver surface with liver of sulfur to boost the contrast on your piece. Just dip your piece into the liver of sulfur solution to darken the background. Then, put your kombu items into a tumbler and run it for at least 10 minutes. When you remove your domes from the tumbler, give them a quick rinse and dry them off. Now you're ready to mount them in your bead framework. I found that the best way to hold the domes in place is to use silicone caulking. Just use a couple of small dots of caulking, then push the domes into place. Put aside your bead for 24 hours to allow time for the caulking to set. Now I know that some of you are wondering why I used caulking to hold the domes in place, and some of you are wondering why I don't clamp or tape the domes to hold them in place. Caulking will hold it together. Clamping it might crush the domes, and tape might pull off the gold. As I said in part one of this video, you can use this as a building block to make a wide variety of jewelry items, including rings, necklaces, bracelets, charms, and of course what I made, a pendant. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. The Online Jewelry Academy has other free videos like this one. In fact, we have over 350 posted to our website at onlinejewelryacademy.com. Or you can sign up for one of our paid courses on udemy.com. We have a course for beginners entitled Colorful Silver Jewelry, an intermediate course on making hinges, and a stone setting course that details five different stone setting operations. There are links to discount codes in the description of this video. If you're interested in seeing the full Durston Tools product line, log on to durston.com forward slash OJA. Purchases made using this link will help to support the production of new OJA videos and won't raise the price a penny, a pound, or a peso. Thanks for watching.